My name is John Brenneman. I am the president here at MOA Vacations, and today we are going to talk about Africa. Uh, before I turn it over to Kevin, I just had a couple of things uh, that I always like to go over before we get started. Uh, the first thing is, is we are taping this uh, webinar. Uh, so tomorrow we will uh, email uh, everyone who's on the webinar. In fact, everyone who signed up for the webinar will uh, uh, send you a copy uh, of this presentation so you can view it again. Uh, one thing I always mention uh, is all of the trips we do, whether it's a group or individual travel, um, we always invite along friends and family. Uh, we're here to make sure that you have the most enjoyable vacation possible. Uh, and if you'd have more fun uh, with your family there or with friends there, absolutely uh, invite them. Uh, Kevin's going to talk about the size of some of these groups. So a lot of times a family can end up being the entire group. Um, but when I talk about uh, us taping this, the reason I always want to bring up friends and family up front uh, is the fact that uh, if you want to share uh, the video, we actually upload it to YouTube. So it's just a link. So it's really easy to share that with friends and family. So if you have people who are interested or interested in going with you, uh, please feel free to share the video uh with them that we send you tomorrow um for those who aren't aware uh, moa vacations we are the affinity uh travel partner for uh, military officers association um of america uh we are a full service travel agency so um basically we specialize in vacations so we hope you'll give us a call uh for your next vacation be it africa a cruise river cruise or wherever you'd like to go uh, i know kevin has a lot to go through today uh so i'm going to kind of cut short my normal talk uh kevin is going to go through uh africa travel and talk about all of the different options you have uh, it's a huge continent so of course there's a wide variety of different safaris that you can choose from um i will be uh online trying to answer questions uh as uh, kevin does his presentation um, and then at the very end, we will do a Q&A. So you can go ahead and uh, enter your questions in chat now. Uh, and either I will answer them as Kevin is going through uh, Africa or Kevin and I both will answer them at the, end, at the end. So without any further ado, Kevin, I'm turning it over to you. Uh, take us to Africa. Fantastic, John. Thank you very, very much. And what an absolute pleasure it is to be here with you. Um, I am going to ask if anybody is, aside from John and myself, if anybody else is on camera, that would be great. Um, uh, just so we can make sure that a we aren't uh, broadcasting you across the the, the spectrum, and b um, you know if you could turn your camera off, it just ensures that everybody will have the opportunity to uh, not be distracted and see the whole presentation because Africa truly is something absolutely fantastic. It's absolutely amazing, and you know we are so proud and privileged to partner with John and his team uh, to bring you the very very best best of Africa. Uh, African Travel, in fact, or at African Travel, we do not sell directly to you as the public. We only work through John and his team um, because we really truly believe that what the team can bring to you is absolutely second to none. Whether it's Africa or you're booking some other part of the world with the team, uh, they are absolutely going to get to know you and each trip you book will just get that much better as they've got some personal information about you. They know exactly what floats your boat. They know what works for you. They will sometimes see things come across their desks that you will not see in the public domain. And that means that they can call you up and say, wow, I've seen something that I think would just be absolutely perfect for you. So that is the reason that we choose to do this, to work with John and the team to ensure that between us, they are experts on you. We're the back of house expert on Africa. And between us, we are bringing you the very, very best of Africa. Um, and, uh, on, and that goes true for any destination that they are offering to you. So a little bit about us at African Travel and who we are in partnership with, uh, with, uh, with MOA um, is, of course, we are uh, North America's largest tour operator that focuses exclusively on Africa. And our moniker is We Know Africa, purely and simply because it is true. We have been in business for 47 years, so we've certainly been around the block a few times. And when we're offering you Africa, the biggest thing for us is we want to give you a choice of truly exceptional experiences. 
We are a luxury tour operator, so everything is going to be very comfortable. Uh, we're going to be taking care of you every single step of the way, no matter how uh, we bring Africa to you. And as John mentioned, we certainly have some small group opportunities, which we'll talk about in a second. Or a small group is not your preferred way to do it. And it looks as though I have just lost my screen here. So let me one second. And oh, there it is. It's back. Thank goodness for that. Um, it has been a little bit, uh, we were having a little bit of a challenge with some uh, technical issues, or I think connectivity issues. Uh, the joys of working virtually these days, right? That uh, when everything goes smoothly, it's fabulous. When something goes wrong, it's like, oh dear. But we are back and we're cooking with gas again, which is great. Um, so uh, yes, you know we do offer small group departures. So, and but we also offer you the choice that if that doesn't work for you or a specific date doesn't work for you, then you can absolutely travel on your own with your with the people that you choose to travel with. Um, as John mentioned, you could perhaps go with part as part of a family. So we're going to look at all of those options today and see how to go about doing that. Uh, one of the most common ways to travel. Uh, to Africa, of course, is um, really as part of a small group. And uh, we're certainly going to take a look at some of the options with that. But before we get there, we are actually part of the Travel Corporation. Many of you may have heard of some of our sister companies, uh, Uniworld Vacations, Trafalgar, uh, Red Carnation Hotels, and so on. There are actually 42 brands worldwide. This is the largest privately held travel company in the world. And at African Travel, we are also about sustainability. Our Make Travel Matter campaign is extraordinarily important to us. And we're very proud to introduce you to our poster child for 2023. This guy usually puts a smile on everybody's face. Who couldn't love that face that you see on the screen right now? Uh, but the whole point of this is that we want to ensure that, you know, deforestation is a huge problem in Africa, certainly actually in, in all across the world. And we want to ensure through our sustainability measures, that we are keeping the forests going, that we've got the conservation of wildlife in hand, and indeed that we are looking after the cultures and the communities and the people of Africa so that everything lives in harmony and Africa will be there for generations to come. And those forests will absolutely be there as this guy grows into adolescence and indeed into adulthood, has his own family in due course, that they will be able to have the trees still to play, through, play in and swing through and so on. I also want to take a very quick look at our Why Safari campaign and why would you consider going on safari? There are so many aspects to a trip to Africa. I think being the fact that it's somewhat adventurous is, of course, a given. And the fact that going to see the wildlife, what an excitement that is. These are givens for Africa. But the number one bonus that everybody finds when they travel to Africa is meeting the people and discovering the cultures. You know, when any of you come back from Africa, it's always amazing to hear from you because you say, wow, the animals were fantastic. The scenery was beautiful, but the people blew us away. They stole our hearts. And they always say that you will go the, you know, you go to Africa uh, to see the animals, but you absolutely will go back to meet more of the people. And of course, you are doing this in some of the planet's most fantastic uh, locations. Uh, for example, Victoria Falls and Gorongoro Crater. And we're going to be taking a look at those as we go through the program uh, this afternoon. And another big thing about Africa is the fact that, first of all, it's all these incredible wide open spaces. But, you know, something very special happens to you when you travel to Africa. I know a lot of people think I'm a little crazy when I say this, but it's as though your soul communes with the earth. And once you've gone there, you will understand it. You will get it. Until you've traveled to Africa, you can't possibly know that feeling. Um, but once you've been, you will have a special affinity with others who have been. And it's truly a wellness destination. It really is a life-changing experience. You'll hear me use that terminology all uh, throughout the presentation. But it's also a trip that is filled with wow moments. I can't guarantee what your wow moments might be. A lot of them, of course, are related to nature. Um, but indeed, it will be, there will be wow moments. And then that sustainability uh, factor that we just talked about, every single trip that we create to Africa is going to give back to one of those three pillars, i.e. the continent of Africa, conservation of wildlife, or indeed its people. Um, and that... Um, 
the one of the number one reasons to travel to Africa is there is absolutely something for everybody. Um, so whether you're young or young at heart, no matter who you are, there is always something for everybody. So I want to take a look because it's not only about the destinations, and we are certainly going to take a look at some of the most common destinations and countries within Africa. Africa is a massive continent. You can fit the United States into Africa three times over, and most people just don't realize how big Africa is as a continent. Um, so well, we will take a look at some of the most popular countries that we offer. Um, but first of all, I want to also take a look at some of the travel styles. You know, we all have our own style of travel. We're all going on a trip for a different reason. So we look at that as well in the planning of this. When we're working with John and Mike and the team, we look at the different ways to travel and what it means. And, you know, as I mentioned before, something very special happens to you when you go to Africa. And what better way to start off married life, perhaps, you know, have a honeymoon, is, of course, to do it in this incredible, incredible destination. Or if it's, uh, you know, in the same kind of vein, those 60th birthdays, those 40th wedding anniversaries, whatever it might be. And multi-generational travel has become a really big part of what we do. And Africa really opens itself to that for the families um, and for the, um, you know, and, and taking the grandparents. It really is amazing. There is something for everybody and every generation. And then, of course, we are the first full service uh, uh, safari company that speaks exclusively to our LGBTQ plus market. And we offer our pride safaris. So, you know, again, if you're traveling as a multi-generational family, you're going on a honeymoon, you're traveling as part of the LGBTQ plus market. These are all very different ways. And you could be going to the same country in Africa, but it's a very different approach. And at African Travel, that's how we work it. We look at each and everybody's differing circumstances and what's going to work best for them. We also offer small customized groups. So as John mentioned at the top of the presentation, perhaps as you or your family, if there are eight, nine, 10, 12 of you in your family that all would like to experience Africa together, we can customize something very, very special for you that's going to speak specifically to the interests that you have as a family group, or maybe you're the opera society or the PTA society or your local pub trivia people, whatever it might be, we look to how that can work and create an itinerary and a group that is just specifically customized for you. But we also recognize that there are some of you who really just prefer to join a small group tour. This is going to be a preset departure that's already existing. And in fact, we've been talking to the team at MOA Vacations and we, we're working to put together something for you that will be an exclusive Mo Vacations departure. So it would be along the lines of this where we create an itinerary and then you as an individual travel can traveler can buy into that itinerary. So this is something we're looking for. And certainly if you are interested in that, then please let the guys at Mo Vacations know about it. And then we will take that information and then start to create something that is really uh, speaks to what it is and the interests that you are telling us about. But for us, that the ones that we do already have uh, available, these go to Egypt, Kenya, uh, Southern Africa, and Tanzania. And uh, um, these, they, our, our, our tours operate with a minimum of four guests and a maximum of 12. That's on these preset departures. Now, if you're customizing your own group and you're bringing your group of friends or whatever it might be, or your family together, to be honest, the sky's the limit, although I will tell you that it is truly my belief. Africa lends itself to the smaller group. So even if, you know, if you're 16, 18, 20, that's great. It works. But we like to work with a lot of the smaller, very intimate uh, lodges that maybe only have 10, 12, 14 rooms. So that means a maximum of perhaps 18, 20, perhaps 22 people in lodge or camp at any one time. 
Um, the team at Moa Vacations, Moa Vacations can certainly give you all the departure dates, pricing, and so on for these preset departures that we do have available. But one thing I do like to make mention of is that, in for example, uh, you know, we are very aware of the plight of the solo traveler. So if you are somebody who travels alone, we have, you know, we absolutely do everything we can to mitigate your single supplement situation. We do know that. So we're not a company that flat on 75, 80, 85% onto single supplement. We try to keep our single supplements as low as possible. And indeed, on our Tanzania Explorer small group uh, departure, we have nine departures in 2023. And on all of those departures, we have availability with no single supplement. So if you are a solo traveler, you'd like to travel as part of a small group and Tanzania is on your bucket list, then why not? You, this is really makes it really worthwhile for you. Going into 2024, we're looking at that again, and I will tell you a little bit of a secret, as in we have offered this no single supplement on that particular tour um, for the last five years. So it, I do believe that going into 2024, that trend will continue. So that's definitely going to be something that you want to look at. We also have an amazing offer for the rest of 2023. There are still a handful of spaces available on our Kenya Wildlife Safari. This is another small group departure, and this is really incredible. It goes to Nairobi, and then it includes uh, Amboseli. It goes to uh, the Maasai Mara. It's really a five-star trip to Kenya. And for this one, as you can see, the $54.99 is the from price, um, and it includes international air. So if you're thinking of traveling this year, this is absolutely the deal of the century, never to be repeated. It is truly, truly amazing. Now, we will offer this itinerary in 2024, and we are looking, working with the airlines right now to see if we can get the same deal on the air so that we can bring it to you at a similar Similar price, of course, as like everything, uh, pricing for 2024 is going to increase and has already gone up. Um, but we will try to keep this amazing deal alive for you going into 2024. And I've touched already on the culture. Who can't love these smiling faces? You know, the people of Africa are so welcoming. They smile beautifully. They sing beautifully. They really, truly are. And as I said, you know, the number one thing we hear from everybody who comes back from a trip to Africa is loved it, loved it, loved it, life changing, and cannot wait to go back and meet more of the people and learn more of their cultures. So I hope from everything that I've said thus far, you get the impression and the understanding that we are all about trying to ensure that you are going to go on safari your way. We're doing it at the way you like to do it. So whether you're going to go as a family group, whether you're going to go as part of a preset departure, or whether you want to travel on a more independent basis, and even if you travel independently, we are absolutely with you every step of the way. So it's not as though we're throwing you out there to the lion, so to speak, excuse the pun. Uh, we are still going to be with you every single step of the way. So I would now like to break it down a little bit and take a look at some of the most popular countries in Africa. And I'm going to start with South Africa. So South Africa is what I consider to be Africa 101. It is the most commonly visited country in Africa for first time travelers to Africa. Everybody that you're going to meet there is going to speak English, hot and cold running water everywhere, flushing toilets everywhere you go, and the food is to die for. Now that is true really all across Africa. One of the big surprises everybody has is the quality of the food. Even when you're out in the middle of the bush on safari, the gourmet style and level of, of meals that they're preparing is truly mind-blowing. It's absolutely amazing. And of course, any visit to South Africa would not be complete without a stop in Cape Town, which is the mother city of South Africa, right down on the bottom of the continent. It is a stunningly beautiful city, one of the top five cities in the world to be visited uh, right now. And it's, it's surrounded on three sides by water with the iconic Table Mountain in the background. And one of the number one requests for anybody visiting Cape Town is to go up 
table mountain. We do that ascend and descend by way of this cable car system. And it's really kind of cool because as the cable car goes up and down the mountain, it um, slowly rotates. So it means everybody gets the opportunity to get great photographic opportunities out over the ocean, down towards the city, and indeed back towards the mountain, which is equally as interesting. Another very commonly requested uh, trip while in the Cape Town area is to go out to Cape Point. Uh, this is one of the most important parts on our planet geographically. It's the southernmost point of the continent of Africa. It's very, very rugged. It's very beautiful. It's the meeting point of the Indian and Atlantic Oceans. And it's just a wonderful place to spend half a day or so. And just about 20 minutes along the coast from Cape Point, we've got Boulders Beach, where you have the opportunity to see a year-round colony of penguins. So you don't have to go all the way to Antarctica to see penguins. We've got them right here for you in Africa. And as I always like to say, who doesn't love to see a couple of penguins kissing on the beach? We've talked quite a bit already about how wonderful it is to meet the people when you go to Africa. And one of the best ways to do that is in their kitchens. Uh, you know, when people come to your homes, I know kitchen is often the space where everybody gravitates towards. And it really is a great thing to do. And a lot of times you'll actually go to the market with them, perhaps, to help them choose out the products and the produce and so on. Go back to their home cook with them in the kitchen, and then you will all sit around together and enjoy the fruits of your labors and get to know about their lives in general. And talking of cooking, what goes so well with cooking? But of course, wine. And for those of you who are wine drinkers, the South African wines are exceptional. Now, the Cape Winelands are only about 25 miles from the center of Cape Town. So very, very easy to visit while you're staying in Cape Town. It's easy to go out there for a half a day and maybe do a wine tasting or and have a lunch at some of the fantastic, exceptional restaurants that are there. But the Cape Winelands are stunningly beautiful. This is a Kodak moment every turn and when's the last time you heard that turn of phrase um, but it really is great and the quality of the wine of the wines is exceptional they're winning prizes with the very very best of the french and the californian wines and so on so it really is beautiful and you know even if you're not a wine drinker i still recommend getting out to the winelands because the sun the scenery is so stunning it's so beautiful and it's a great way to see some of rural south africa that's not the safari portion so you can go out here for half a day you could actually go for a full day do two or three tastings and a lunch but a lot of people actually opt when we're customizing it to there are some fantastic boutique hotels out here and a lot of people actually opt to go out and spend a night or two in the winelands and really really get to indulge and delve into it and then, of course, we're going to go on safari. So safari in South Africa is an exceptional experience. Um, it is really, really uh, a very, very cool. Um, and I'm going to use a word here. Most of you are going to, but I use it in the most positive terms possible. Most of you are going to be absolutely shocked by how up close and personal you're going to get with the wildlife and the animals. Um, it is incredible. It's very, very safe. This image is in no way doctored or anything. Um, it really is absolutely amazing how close you will get to the wildlife while traveling around South Africa. You're going to get your uh, wildlife or, or your, uh, your wildlife experience. You're going to get the fill of it very quickly and lots of it once you go onto the safari portion of the trip. And I know many of you are looking to complete or check off the big five, which of course are the lion, buffalo, elephant, leopard up there in the top right hand side, which is the most elusive of the big five. And of course, the rhinos. The rhinos are critically, critically endangered. And at African Travel, we are doing everything we possibly can to ensure that the rhinos uh, do continue on into the future. And in that vein, there are several places, many places in South Africa to go on safari. But I'm going to choose one just purely because I have a couple of things that are specific to this um, and the work that they're doing. And this is Shamwari Private Game Reserve. Shamwari has the number one rhino protection program in all of Africa. And it is one of our Make Travel Matter experiences by visiting this area. The work they're doing for conservation of wildlife wildlife is exceptional. They also have the Wildlife Rehabilitation Center here. And it's very poignant because as you walk down this uh, archway that you can see on the left hand side, you'll see the concrete blocks have a plaque on them with a year. And under the year is engraved 
all of the animals that went extinct in that year. It's really quite the eye opener when it uh, when you get there. But the, among some of the really good work that they're doing at Chamwari, as I said, is the conservation of the rhinos. And they go out and they find baby rhinos that have been orphaned uh, because their mothers have been taken by poachers. They bring them back to Shemwari, they re rehabilitate them, and they're able to release them into the wild with huge success. So it's really an amazing program for the future of the rhinos. These babies would certainly die if they were left out in the wild alone. And uh, you might be wondering what that sheep is doing in this image. Uh, it turns out that sheep make actually very, very good companions to baby rhinos. Also, as it happens, to baby elephants. So it allows them to, by putting the sheep in, it, it calms the rhino down, it gives it companionship, and it allows them to keep the human interaction with the rhino to a minimum, which in turn makes it a whole lot easier to release them back into the wild. Now, I'm sure that you're also looking at uh, or looking at this and going, well, this doesn't look very good. Uh, what's, you know, what's happening here? So another program they have at Shamwari is the Big Cat Rescue Program. And they go all over the world and they find big cats, primarily lions, that are being kept in conditions like this. Um, so these two were found in a circus in Bulgaria, in this cage. Um, and they bring them back to Shamwari and they allow them to live out the rest of their lives in conditions that are much more in tune with what they should have been born into in the first place. Now, these animals are invariably too old for them to be released to be released into the wild. Um, so they do have to stay in the Shamwari uh, area in the private reserve. Um, but they are well looked after. And in fact, these two lions, when they came to Shamwari, this was the first time that their paws had ever touched soil or grass. It really is absolutely incredible and the work that they are doing with this. Um, uh, it's not only all about the, um, the, the, the big animals, of course. A lot of it is absolutely about the smaller animals. Um, and this is a dung beetle. And dung beetles are very famous because they are basically the hoovers of the bush. Um, and they go around and they clean up after everything that uh, leaves behind its dung. Um, but they're fascinating. And the rangers love to stop, get out of the jeep, and talk about these kinds of animals and this wildlife as well. Um, and dung beetles are fascinating because they navigate by the sun and the stars. And to learn about them and how they're able to move on their own, uh, you know, volume that is many, many times their own body weight is truly, truly remarkable indeed. And one of the fun, greatest things to do when you're in Africa, all over Africa, we do, we have this wonderful tradition where about 10 or 15 minutes before the sun sets, we will stop, we'll get out of the Jeep and out of the Jeep will come tables and chairs and tablecloths and uh, cutlery and glassware and a whole bar of gin, vodka, beer, red wine, white wine, uh, rum, everything you can imagine, truly everything that makes up a whole bar, as long with coffees and teas and juices and sodas and things. Um, it's really quite remarkable and appetizers follow. It's like Mary Poppins pulling it all out of the bag. It's absolutely amazing. And we stop and we pour ourselves a drink and we bid farewell to the sun. This is a tradition that is done all over Africa every day. We call it sundowners and it really is one of my favorite, favorite traditions from Africa. It's really remarkable. I want to move up a little bit further north now and take a look at Zambia and Zimbabwe. And Zambia, of course, is prey or this area because right on the border of these two countries is Victoria Falls. So this is the largest curtain of water in the world. It's one of the seven natural wonders of the world. It's very easy to add Victoria Falls on to any trip to South Africa. It's a very short one hour flight from Johannesburg. So very easy to do. And, you know, I get asked all the time, Kevin, I've been tonight. Niagara, do I really need to go to Victoria Falls? That would be a resound. Niagara is kind of a, a drip in the bucket compared to Victoria Falls, uh, which is really amazing. And here you can be as crazy as you want. You can go zip lining and bungee jumping. You can take helicopter rides, flight of the angels, they call it. It's wonderful. And look at those folks in the middle image there in the middle of your screen. If you look behind them, you can see how uh, there is the kind of a color gray changes. That's because they're actually sitting on the edge of the falls. It's a little crazy, a little suicide 
suicidal, perhaps you can only do it for a very short period of the year when the falls are actually in low flood. But if you just want to walk the length of the falls or a manicured walkways with fantastic turnouts for really exceptional photography opportunities, um, and it's a really, really great thing to do to see one of the seven natural wonders of the world. I also want to draw your attention here to uh, Mfui Lodge. This is in Zambia, um, and uh, we're looking primarily here at top left and top right. Uh, these are the elephants, uh, uh, what happens at Mfui Lodge, because this lodge was actually built around a grove of mango trees, and the elephants had been feasting on the mangoes for generations. So after the lodge was completed, the elephants like, well, the heck with your lodge, we're still coming to get our mangoes, and uh, they uh, now, their elephants are creatures of habit, and they follow their old traditional paths, which now take them through the lobby of the lodge. Now, I cannot guarantee this will happen if you stay at Mfui Lodge. Lodge. But if it does, I'm sure you would agree this absolutely would be a wow moment in Africa. Moving on up further north now, we're going to Kenya. Um, so Kenya differs from South Africa. This is now East Africa. So Kenya differs from South Africa. In first and foremost, we don't have a Cape Town style experience. Uh, the capital of Kenya is Nairobi, and that's where almost everybody arrives and leaves from when visiting Kenya. But it, you know, truly a day, a day and a half in Nairobi is plenty, whereas Cape Town is somewhere that you can easily spend three, four, five days. You could spend two or three weeks in Cape Town and not do everything. Nairobi, not quite as much for you to see and do as a tra or visiting a traveler, um, but still an exciting and bustling city. But this is much, much more about safari. But as I mentioned, we certainly like to start in Nairobi. And Nairobi National Park is really a very interesting situation. This is the only wildlife national park in the world that abuts right up to the center of the city. The animals are thriving here. And it's really kind of cool because when you drive from the international airport and the main highway that goes into the city drives along the perimeter of the national park. So your safari experience starts before you even get to your hotel. Tell, uh, depending on where the animals are and if some of them are up close to the perimeter of the, the park, you could absolutely be seeing zebras. And by the way, in Africa, we do call them zebras, not zebras. Um, you can be seeing them before you even um, get, uh, go uh, arrive at your hotel. Cultural experiences here are exceptional as well. And at African Travel, we really do love to do anything that is women's empowerment. Um, and uh, these ladies here were kind of a little bit out, down and out on their luck, but very, very creative and talented with their hands. So now they make their own beads. They do a lot of ceramic work. And these are all one-off pieces that are made specially by them. So, you know, you can guarantee you if you want to buy something here that they have made, A, you're doing really something very good for them because they've now got a second chance at life uh, by doing this work. And secondly, once you get it back to your hotel and look at it closely or get it home, you won't see made in China or something like that engraved on the bottom. These are all locally made pieces and the, uh, the, 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 the uh, money that is spent on them goes directly back to the communities. From Nairobi, a day, as I said, day, a day and a half in Nairobi, then we can go down to Amboseli National Park. This is in the south of Kenya. They have the most wonderful views here of Mount Kilimanjaro. Now, Mount Kilimanjaro is actually across the border in Tanzania. Um, and just out of, in, but from Amboseli, they just have these fantastic, fantastic views of the mountain. A couple of pieces of trivia about uh, Mount Kilimanjaro. It is the largest freestanding mountain in the world. Now, there are plenty of other mountains that are higher than Mount Kilimanjaro, um, but they are all part of a range, whereas Mount Kilimanjaro, as the song says, rises from the Serengeti like the Empress of Africa. It is truly, truly amazing. And whether the giraffe is photobombing the uh, mountain or the mountain is photobombing the image of the giraffe, not quite sure which, but either way, I'm sure you would agree, a wow moment in Africa. Uh, then this is also Amboseli, the home to a huge a herd of elephants. Um, and these elephants, actually, many of them, their tusks are so long. If you look at the one over here on the right hand side, it's actually dragging on the floor. So we call them the tuskers. Um, so uh, and they are the huge herds of elephant in Amboseli. 
Moving up further north into the central northern part of Kenya, we go to Samburu National Park. Samburu is actually home to five, you get all the big five here, but they, in addition to that, home to five species of animals that are found nowhere else in Africa. Now, I know you're saying, well, Kevin, I'm sure this is the five species that we're looking at. I see up in the top there a zebra, and I know that there are zebras all across Africa. But if you're familiar with zebras, you will know that zebras normally have a very broad stripe pattern. This is a Grevy's zebra. As you can see, the stripes are very, very compact. And uh, this species of zebra is only found in Sambu, nowhere else on the planet. Uh, similarly, below the ostrich, across the rest of Africa, ostriches have pink legs and pink necks. This is a Somalian blue ostrich. Um, so uh, it's the only place in Africa where you'll see them with this blue coloring. And the same goes for the other three. I'm not going to get into detail about them today, but suffice to say. Now here also in this area, we have the Reteti Foundation. And here the ladies who set up, this is a women's empowerment group. So the ladies who founded this and operate it and run it, they are doing the same work here for baby elephants as we saw happening in Shamwari in South Africa for the baby rhinos, i.e. they go around, they find baby elephants who have been orphaned 90% of the time because of poachers. They bring them to the foundation, they raise them, they get them to adulthood, and then they're able to release them back into the wild. It's an incredible, incredible uh, work that they are doing here. Uh, also in this area, we've got the Lewa Conservancy. Um, and here they have magnificent views of Mount Kenya. Very different from Mount Kilimanjaro, which was a domed. Here, Mount Kenya, very rugged. And of course, both have that capping of snow, which a lot of people find very interesting and unexpected when they travel to Africa. There is indeed, by the way, a very good rhino conservation program in this area as well. Um, Shamwari certainly is the leader, but this one is very, very good. And then numbers of rhinos are increasing here. That is not the case for most of Africa, as I mentioned earlier, critically endangered. And at African Travel, we're doing everything we can to save the rhinos. Um, it is a race against time. And I'll be telling you, tell you that in the big picture, we are losing the race, um, but it is uh, we are trying. Also in Kenya, we have the Maasai Mara. This is the Africa of out of Africa. If you've ever seen the movie, those beautiful, huge swaths of land, absolutely littered with wildlife and dotted with the occasional acacia tree. Really, really fantastic. Absolutely wonderful. Moving south of the border now, we move into Tanzania. Now from a geographical or aesthetic uh, look, Tanzania are very similar to Kenya, i.e. those great big wide open plains, wide open spaces, um, and some wonderful lodges and so on here. And we're going to take a closer look at some other lodges in a second. But I like to bring this one up here because this one is in Arusha. Now, Arusha is the main arrival and departure point for Tanzania. It is a very bustling city, but to be honest, there's very little here for anybody who is visiting as a tourist. But the Arusha Coffee Lodge is on a coffee plantation on the outskirts of Arusha. And as you can see, how welcome, how much more welcoming can you get than something like like this and while you're there you have the opportunity to experience and learn all about coffees we also look at uh, can take you to tarangiri now tarangiri flies under the radar it's not very well known and yet it has an abundance of wildlife and that's one of the things we do at african travel we're always looking for places that are not so well known, um, that, that do fly under the radar, that are not so heavily visited. So we give you that opportunity to do these hidden gems along with these standards and the most important places. Lake Manyara is not far from Lake Tarangiri, uh, from uh, Tarangiri National Park. And this, of course, as the name would imply, is on a lake. Fantastic four-legged animals, but an incredible abundance of bird life here. One of the planet's biggest concentrations of birds. And I love it because everybody who goes here comes away from it saying, wow, I never thought I would be so interested in birds, but I learned so much in the short time that I was at Lake Manyara. It was fantastic. From there, we can move on up to Ngorongoro Crater. Now, many people believe that this should be the eighth wonder of the world. It is the largest fully intact caldera on the planet, and it is simply, simply astounding. Um, it's very deceiving. What look like these hills on the side here are actually about two thousand feet tall. 
Uh, the floor of the crater is littered with wildlife and the wildlife never leaves the crater and no humans are allowed to live in the crater. Um, all of the lodges and so on are up on the rim of the crater. You wake up in the morning and you go out onto the balcony of your lodge and you've got your hot cup of steaming coffee and you look down into the crater and you can hear the lions roaring and the elephants trumpeting and the clouds are cascading down the side of the crater. Oh, I have goosebumps just thinking about it. It is so, so beautiful. This is a wow moment in Africa to be sure. And then from there, we move on to the Serengeti. Now, I talked about the Maasai Mara in Kenya. The Serengeti is to Tanzania what the Maasai Mara is to Kenya, i.e. these beautiful swaths of land, true, raw, majestic Africa, just littered with wildlife and stunningly beautiful. When you see uh, documentaries on BBC or National Geographic, very often they're filmed in this part of Africa. Um, because it is so beautiful. And you have the opportunity here to do a hot air balloon ride. Uh, what better way to float, to waft across the plains of Africa in total silence, except of course when they pump the gas a little bit, look down on the changing landscapes and the wildlife below. It is simply remarkable. But this land is absolutely littered. What look like all these ants running around here, this is all wildlife in the Serengeti. It is simply amazing. And the Serengeti, as well as the Maasai Mara, is home to the Great Migration. Now, many of you have probably heard of the Great Migration. A lot of you believe that this is a once-a-year phenomenon. But as you can see from the map on the left-hand side, this is a 12-month cycle that these animals move. It is 1.2 million wildebeest and zebra that are moving between these two countries on roughly on the schedule that we see here. It is absolutely amazing. Nine months of the year in Tanzania and the Serengeti. And Getty, and then approximately three months of the year they get across into Kenya. Um, it is a wall of animals. But if you were go to either of these countries outside of the migration time, um, don't worry because there are so there's so much wildlife here, and it's only the wildebeest and the zebra that actually migrate. So the giraffes and the lions and the elephants and the rhinos and whatever they don't migrate. So they stay where they are all year round. So even if you're outside in an area outside of the migration, you are still going to see a plethora of wildlife. Also part of Tanzania is Zanzibar. So this is on the coast of, or just an island, just off the coast of Tanzania. It's called the Spice Islands. Um, it is very, very cool. It has a very definite Middle Eastern influence here. The food here is fantastic. As I mentioned earlier, food across Africa is absolutely amazing. And I want to make mention here just of another specific resort um, because it really is something that's kind of fun. Uh, this is Pem Pemba Island. It's about six miles off actually the island of Zanzibar, the Manta Resort. They have 12 uh, units on the mainland of the island on the beach, but in the middle of the bay, if you look down on the bottom or uh, right there, you can see they have this room that we're looking at. Um, and on the top deck is this sunbed. Um, in the and then down on the water level is uh, living area, bathroom, and so on. But what I love about it, and the wow factor here, is the bedroom because the bedroom is below water. You are literally sleeping with the fishes, for want of a better expression. It's absolutely amazing. So just another little hidden gem, the kind of things that we like to do at African Travel. Moving a little bit further south now, we're going to take a very quick look at Botswana. So why do I love Botswana? Oh my gosh, Botswana is home to the Okavanga Delta. This is the largest inland delta in the world, and the animals here have adapted to living in, on, and around the water. So much of your safari is going to be done in and on the or around the water. Um, it is remarkable. And we have the opportunity here to actually go on safari in the Makoros. Makoros, of course, are dugout canoes. It's a really great way to see safari from a, just a different angle. Uh, also, by the way, Botswana, home to the second largest migration on the planet. And this is a migration of 30,000 zebras. So it's not as many animals as the East Africa migration, but these zebra, this migration, very few people know anything about, and even fewer have ever seen it. So if you're interested in that, when you're in Botswana, we can work around that, making sure that we get you there at a time when it's going to be happening and into the areas of Botswana where it will be. Botswana also home to meerkats, which are fascinating. 
Um, they really are absolutely mischievous. I'm sure many of you have seen them on uh, Discovery Channel um, or National Geographic, the programs that they have dedicated to them. Really, really fantastic. Now, you'll remember earlier that I talked about the sundowners where we stop and do it. Well, in Botswana, we're going to take your sundowners to the next level. And we're going to do them Okavanga Delta style, i.e. you will be in your dugout canoe and come around the corner. The bar is all set up. Wow, what an amazing way to bid farewell to the sun for the day. But you know, the bottom line is Botswana is all about the wow. I can't guarantee that you'll come home with images like this. I hope that you do. I'm sure that if you do, you will, you know you'll be the talking point of the uh, cocktail parties and dinners in your area for weeks and months to come. Um, it is fantastic. I also want to take a really quick look at Rwanda. So Rwanda's up in East Africa um, and very, very well known for the primates, particularly for the gorillas. 13 different species of primates that are found nowhere else in Africa um, uh, that uh, live here in Rwanda. But before we get out to the gorillas, we love to go and take you to Kigali, which is the capital city. Uh, Kigali is actually the cleanest city in all of Africa uh, because um, in remembrance of all the killings and the genocide that happened in uh, Kigali uh, or in Rwanda about 30, 35 years ago now, the government has decreed that on one Saturday of the month, every able-bodied person needs to come out and help clean the city. And they're so proud of this that actually many people do it all the time. They come out, they're constantly cleaning their city. So it truly is remarkable. Uh, Rwanda, by the way, a very progressive country, uh, very, very much into women's rights, women's empowerment, a lot of women-owned companies here and so on, um, and tea plantations. Uh, Rwanda, also the first country in Africa to ban single-use plastics. So you will not see any plastic bags hanging off of trees or on the side of the road, and you certainly will not get them while you shop. It is, in fact, illegal to take that kind of plastic bag into Rwanda, um, but we will go through, we would go through all of those kinds of restrictions and so on when at the time of planning so that you are aware of that. But as I mentioned, it truly is all about the gorillas and gorilla trekking is taking life changing to the next level uh, to get so up close and um, with these animals, I could spend 30 minutes just talking about gorilla trekking and perhaps something that we could do in a future uh, session uh, because it is so fascinating. It's so amazing. Uh, also, uh, in, in Rwanda, it's not only about the gorillas and the primates. We also have the opportunity now with the opening of Akajira National Park. There are some wonderful five-star lodges available here. So it is possible to do this as a standalone destination as well with the full five, a uh, big five experience uh, for safari. Back down in Southern Africa, moving off to the western coast of, you know, of, of, of Southwest Africa, we've got Namibia. So Namibia is really amazing because it actually shares a border with Botswana. And you may recall, we talked about Botswana, home to the Okavanga Delta. Well, Namibia is all about the desert. It's really incredible. The animals have adapted to living here in the desert. And you're going to see in the desert rhinos, elephants, lions, giraffes, all living in these very hard conditions. It is incredible how adaptive wildlife can be. And the people here, the Himba people, are fascinating. Again, how they live in these very, very harsh conditions um, and uh, how they make life happen. And we've also got the Bushmen of the Kalahari here. Um, and, uh, you know, which is, uh, they are fascinating. This is one of the oldest tribes on the planet. And they still stick to their old traditions and their styles. Um, you know, no matter which way you visit Namibia, you can do it by train. We work with Rovers Rail, who have a luxury train, fabulous trip. Or if we do it uh, by flights around the different areas of Namibia. But Namibia is all about, is a feast for the senses. The colors of Namibia are stunningly beautiful. And if you look down below, you'll see the Oryx here. Oryx, of course, is the uh, source of the myth of the unicorn. You saw one a couple of slides earlier in the desert, and you can see how that horn uh, had made that happen. Lastly, I want to take a very quick look at Madagascar. Madagascar is, 500, is an island 500 miles off mainland Africa, um, but a whole world away. 
Uh, it is simply incredible. 87% of the flora and fauna found in Madagascar is found nowhere else on the planet. 107 species and subspecies of lemur. Color reigns supreme in Madagascar, and the people are simply amazing. They're absolutely wonderful. And another little piece of trivia, this is a blue-eyed black lemur. And his claim to flame, fame is that he is the only primate on Earth, aside from human beings, that has blue eyes. Um, so it's really kind of cool. Um, and the next time that comes up on Jeopardy or your pub trivia or whatever it might be, I am sure that uh, you know, I know now that you will know the answer to it. No matter where you travel with us in Africa, we are going to we have our own. We have 16 regional offices throughout Safari Africa. Our people are there to ensure that your trip goes smoothly. They're empowered to make changes as necessary. They will do everything to keep everything going and really know that you're having the most wonderful time in Africa. And, you know, a lot of you will say, well, Kevin, this is all very well, but where are we going to stay? And we've had a look at a couple of lodges so far. But, you know, a lot of you think it's going to be that mud hut with a thatch roof and the hole around the back for the bathroom nothing could be further from the truth um this for example is the 12 apostles hotel in cape town one of africa's top hotels stunningly stunningly beautiful fantastic lodges this is kijara in botswana or you know you have heard of tented camps and a lot of you think it's going to be a boy scout tent with a um a, a cot and an igloo cooler down the side nothing could be further from the truth this is sindili tented camp in Shanghai. Wari in South Africa. It has wooden floors. It has sliding glass doors. Look at it. Even on the end of the, the balcony there, you've got your own private plunge pool. Simply amazing. And I know many of you are concerned about the bathroom situation. And is it kind of going to be that hole around the back? Well, take a look at this. Um, so this is uh, also in Botswana. I can just see you all luxuriating in that copper tub with your glass of champagne. Not all at once, of course, um, but the fire crackling behind, perhaps an elephant walking past the window. Simply amazing. Luxury in Africa is fantastic. And how much fun is this? Now, this is not your everyday bathroom when you're staying at this camp. It's at Cotter's Camp in East Africa. But one day when you're out on safari and on game drive, when you come back, they'll have this set up for you in your tent. And uh, you'll come back in. The water is piping hot. The, the, the bubbles are all going. They've got glasses of champagne there. And you can luxuriate, going a throwback to the 1920s, but looking out over the plains of Africa. It is simply, simply wonderful. Or how about something like this? This is what we call a star bed. Um, and uh, it's really incredible um, because it is, by the way, first and foremost, very, very safe indeed. Um, but, you know, we all live under the same sky. But so few of us have had the opportunity to see the sky in its true magnificent glory. Um, it is simply amazing. And while you're wondering, and before I move to the next slide, um, and many of you might be saying, well, what about the bathroom here? Well, if you see where the four poster bed is and you just come down half a level, move a little bit to the right, you'll see that enclosed area. That's your bathroom. So there is a bathroom right there for you. But talking about that African sky, it is a million points of light shining down upon you. It is absolutely fantastic. No matter where you stay, everything is going to have this true sense of destination. How much more out of Africa do you get than something like this? It is simply, simply remarkable. So we really appreciate you having joined us today. Uh, we, it's been absolutely fantastic having this opportunity. It's been the express trip through Africa. I know that. Um, but we wanted to at least give you a taste of Africa. I know we've only just touched the tip of the iceberg. Um, but uh, for you being with us today, um, if you do put a deposit down on any trip before, um, the, uh, before May 20th, uh, we will include our African Travel Platinum Airport experience. It's just going to make both arrival and departure. We're already doing everything luxury, but we're just taking it to an extra level with this experience. Uh, two more very quick offers that I did just want to be, let you be aware of and know about. If you do book our Southern Explorer itinerary uh, between uh, for travel between March of what's well, already started through end of February next year, 
we're going to throw in an additional complimentary night on safari normally this would be a three night safari it will now be a four night safari and you know gorilla trekking permits are not an inexpensive thing to do they are in rwanda to go trekking with the gorillas right now the permit is fifteen hundred dollars per person uh, to get a one trekking, a one a one time shot at uh, trekking with the gorillas, it is incredibly worthwhile. Uh, the great thing about it is that full fifteen hundred dollars does go back to the conservation of the gorillas. But I did just want to let you know that we are running a special. So if you travel between November of this year and May of twenty four and do go to the gorillas, we will do a thirty percent discount on those permits. But with that, I truly, again, appreciate your time. It has been an absolute pleasure. I'm going to throw it back to John, see if there were any questions that came up that I wasn't able to keep track of while I was going on and on and on about the pleasures, <laughs> treasures, and wow moments of Africa. Um, and uh, But also want to make sure that you guys know who to contact when you're ready to take this, uh, this step and have this amazing life-changing experience. Back to you, John. Well, uh, thank you, Kevin, and what a what a wealth of information. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, there is the chat, uh, so if anybody has a question, go ahead and drop those in now. Uh, we still have five minutes, and of course, we can always run a little bit long if we need to. Uh, I wanted to remind everybody that we are taping this webinar. Um, I know I said at the beginning we had a couple people who joined after we got started. So what we actually do with that video is after we download it, we actually kind of edit it to, to make it as clear as possible, which is typically just trimming it a little bit, uh, upload it to YouTube. And then tomorrow, just like you got the email invitation, you'll get an email from MOA Vacations. And in that, it will have a link uh, to this webinar. Um, so we're not actually sending you the actual huge file because those are difficult to send. It's got the... Uh, the, the video in it, which I mentioned that because as we also said at the beginning, um, please invite friends and family. This is, uh, as Kevin said a number of times, a once in a lifetime experience. Uh, so your kids, your grandkids, your friends, your neighbors, whomever you know uh, that would like to go, it is an experience that you are going to want to share uh, with people that you know and love. Um, and so since that uh, email that you receive uh, just has a link, to YouTube, it's real simple for you to forward it to uh, anyone that you might want to share it with. I see we had a couple of questions come in. So let's see what we have. Um, uh, Patricia, if you want to discuss your group needs, absolutely. Uh, for African travel, uh, probably the two people I would recommend would either be Mike Tyrell or Lisa Brenneman. Um, she is my sister, in case anybody noticed the similar uh, last name. Uh, Steve Matthews, too, uh, I guess would another one. I think of the people that uh, we have uh, in-house that I would consider the African experts. Uh, really, any agent you call could help you, but uh, you're probably best for asking one of those three. Um, Suzanne, can you repeat the information about the safari trip this year that has a special airfare included? Absolutely. And I'm happy to take that one, John. So this is the Kenya Wildlife Safari. Um, so it is a small group departure. There are various preset departure dates. It is obviously to Kenya. Um, and the selling price on that is $54.99, including the international air. Now, as I did mention, uh, that is available currently for all of the remainder of 2023 departures. And your MOA Vacations, any of the agents at MOA Vacation can help you with uh, hooking you up with one of those. Um, in fact, I know Mike is an expert on it. He just <laughs> has people going on it coming up. Yeah. Um, so uh, certainly he's worth calling, but anybody can. Um, and we are going to uh, offer this trip in 2024. What I don't know yet is we are still working with the airline it is uh, we do use kenya airways on that one that does go out of new york because they have a non-stop new york nairobi um so it is on kenyan airways and we're working with them now to see if we can get that same absolute dynamite airfare so that we can go ahead and offer something similar it won't be the same 54.99 it will be a slightly higher price next year uh, but if we can we will do that so stay tuned if you're looking for air inclusive on that for next year but certainly there is still some space available it is selling like hotcakes so there's limited space available for the remainder of 23. Yeah, Kevin, that's the same thing I was going to say. Um, obviously, 5,500 
uh, dollars, including Air to Africa, uh, is a phenomenal deal. Uh, we did a webinar back in January, uh, talked about that promotion as well. And I can tell you, we've had people call and book it. Uh, and as Kevin said, space is very limited. Um, you need you need some flexibility uh, when on, on your dates. Um, uh, but if you give us a little flexibility, uh, hopefully we can find something for you. But yeah, that one in particular, as you can imagine, is going really quick. Uh, Tim asked a question about trip insurance. I can address that one. Uh, Tim, we actually have a trip insurance policy that uh, we use primarily for MOA members. We actually designed the plan uh, and put that together with TripMate. Um, and it would absolutely cover you for the remoteness of, of this trip or any trip you went on. Uh, we have a great relationship with them. Uh, give us a call. Uh, I actually am the insurance. I do two things here, I guess. I do the webinars and I do trip insurance, but I am licensed to sell insurance in all 50 states. I am the in-house insurance expert. So if you have specific questions, you can give me a call. But one of the things since you brought up insurance, I always like to mention is, is MOA Vacation uh, goes for a concierge level of service. And part of that would be assistance in everything that's travel related. So when people do have claims, um, I actually assist them with the filing. In most cases, I go ahead and fill out the claim form and all you have to do is sign it. Uh, if it is a medical uh, reason for the cancellation illness, um, there will be like a form for your doctor to fill out, but you just need to tell them to fill it out. So we do everything to make that as simple as possible. And I will tell you the key uh, that I always tell people when purchasing insurance uh, is we'll get your claim paid, um, which is the reason you purchase uh, trip insurance. So uh suzanne said it was enjoyable it was enjoyable um look it's right at three uh so no more questions so i'm going to turn it over to kevin in just a second for the final word but kevin we do really really appreciate you taking an hour plus uh out of your busy day i know the webinar was an hour but i'm sure a lot of people can tell that a lot of planning practice and preparation went into our prepar uh, to our presentation today so thank you for all your time uh, and uh, thank you for joining us today, and I'll turn it over to you for the last goodbye. Fantastic. Thank you, John. We truly appreciate our partnership with MOA Vacations is exceptional, and we're truly proud to be your partner on all things Africa, uh, and it was my pleasure to bring the taste of Africa today. You know, I always tell everybody, I could have you here till cornflakes time tomorrow talking about Africa, and we still wouldn't cover it all. There's so much to talk about, um, but uh, the, the agents at MOA are ready, cocked and willing to take your calls and talk more about it. Um, and we're all here in partnership to, to answer any questions and make it happen because it is all about giving you that trip of a lifetime. Thank yeah, and, and obviously there was a lot of trimming down to get us into the hour. I think people who've seen me yeah. do webinars before know I normally talk much longer, but you had so much information that we wanted to get out. I wanted to give you as much time as possible. So uh, be on the lookout for the email tomorrow uh, with the link in it. Um, and we will talk to everybody soon. Have a great week and we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.